Japan. It's the most sought after destination for 2024 and as travel to Japan is always changing with new experiences and crucial insights to consider, pay close attention to this update. This vital information will help you know what to expect so that you can better prepare for your Japan trip. So let's uncover the latest updates and help you start planning your dream trip to Japan. But before we get into the video, please remember to like and consider subscribing. These videos do take many hours to put together and your support will help the channel grow and help me keep on making more content. Suica card is back and I'll explain how you can currently get one. It's easy, but it's not straightforward. IC cards are used for transportation and even shopping, really unlocking your Japan trip. It's important to note that Suica is only one IC card amongst many available across Japan, depending on your region and city. If you are looking for a physical card, then Pasmo or Ikoka, Toika or Monaka amongst others will also do the trick. And if you are on an Apple iPhone, then I highly recommend you don't get a physical card and simply add a digital speaker card to your Apple wallet before you even arrive in the country. Unfortunately, if you are on Android, unless your phone is Japanese, you will likely not have access to this feature. So here's a method to get a normal, non-welcome speaker. It's important to note that it's dependent on daily availability. So if one station has run out, then try another. A big mistake that some people are making is heading to the normal station counter and asking when it's important to head to the JR East travel counter which is the same place that you'd exchange and get your JR pass. So if in Tokyo these are available at the JR East travel centers at either Tokyo, Shinagawa, Shibuya, Shinjuku, Ikebukuro or Ueno stations. Head to the JR Pass section and ask an attendant for a Suica card. You'll need to choose between a 1,000 yen or a 2,000 yen prepaid option. This will include a 500 yen deposit and payment is only by cash. You might receive a paper exchange order which you will swap at the counter for your brand new top secret Suica card. And there you have it, welcome to the Suica Club. I'll also leave a link to the official information in the video description just in case things do change in the future. The first official Cherry Blossom Focus has been announced, so pay close attention and start marking these dates in your calendars. In Tokyo, sakura trees are expected to begin flowering on March 23rd, which is a day earlier than average, with full bloom predicted around March the 30th. Meanwhile, the city of Kyoto expects its first bloom in March 23rd, with full bloom expected around April the 1st. Two things that you need to consider during this period. Japan is a vast country with sakura flowering at different times across different areas and elevations. So keeping an eye on forecasts like this one might help you adjust where to visit during your travel dates. The Japan's Meteorological Agency's estimates are all always changing and reissued multiple times between January and April. For reference, last year, the first report was off by nine days, but by the sixth report, they had managed to accurately predict the blooms only being off by 2.1 days. The next Sakura forecast will be published on January the 25th. The way that you climb Mount Fuji is about to change. It's finally happening. Yamanashi Prefecture has announced plans to introduce entry fees for climbers to Mount Fuji starting from the next climbing season which begins on the 1st of July. A gate will be set up at the entrance of the Yoshida Trail at the 5th station with a fee still needing to be determined. Additionally, in order to manage congestion and enhance safety, the number of climbers will also be limited if it exceeds 4,000. And the gates will be closed each day between 4 p.m. and 2 a.m. preventing overnight climbers unless staying in mountain huts on the trail. These changes come as Mount Fuji remains a popular destination with about 221,000 people climbing it last summer. Could this be the start of a revolutionary big change in Japan? And another example of Japan living in the future, Japan is slowly introducing technologically advanced smart trash cans. It's normal for Japanese people to carry their own trash and throw it when they get home, but the lack of public trash cans in Japan often catches tourists off guard and can lead to unfortunate trash disposed incorrectly or littering on popular streets and tourist sites. Not finding a trash can can be very frustrating if you don't know where to dispose of things and being forced to carry trash can be very inconvenient especially if you're also carrying shopping and souvenirs but this is slowly changing or at least in some 
popular areas like Kyoto, Osaka and Hiroshima and will hopefully keep Japan's reputation of clean streets intact. Or will it? These technological advanced smart trash cans are powered by solar panels and allow the trash can to automatically sense when it's getting full and automatically compress the garbage by about 20%. Garbage volume data is analyzed and alerts are sent to workers before they fill up. The argument here is that having the trash cans on the street can actually make the city dirtier because overflow would encourage people to just add to the pile of trash and make the area smell. What are your thoughts on this one? Yay or nay? Visiting Hiroshima, you should by the way, it's a great city and it's certainly been proactive when it comes to adapting for tourism. Ticketing for Hiroshima's Peace Museum, which is also dealing with a huge influx of visitors, leading to some huge wait times due to its current only over-the-counter sales, is about to change and could also signal the start of more and more sites and museums managing tourist numbers through online ticket sales. The museum is planning to launch a new online sales system in March and very proactively the tourist sites is also extending opening hours opening an hour earlier and closing an hour later exclusively for visitors who book online. This is something that I've been advocating for across multiple tourist sites in Japan as I'm a firm believer that many of the congestion problems come as a result of short opening hours and early closing times. So, well done Hiroshima, Kyoto and other major cities, you should take note. If you're heading to Kyoto, and let's face it, most people do, here's a huge travel tip that might help you in 2024. Kyoto is a famous tourist destination, but has been facing challenges from over-tourism affecting locals and the environment. The surge in visitors has led to issues like congested public transport, and to tackle this, the city governments discontinued the sales of one Day bus passes last autumn. But to encourage the spread of tourists to also use a Kyoto subway, the city is promoting a 1,100 yen subway and bus pass which gives you daily access to the Kyoto subway lines, the city bus lines as well as on Kyoto bus and Keihen bus with some exceptions. And let's not forget that Kyoto is also promoting empty-handed tourism to ease bus congestion caused by large bugs and continues to expand services for baggage storage. You can store your luggage for the day near Kyoto station or have it forwarded to your Kyoto city accommodation allowing for hands-free <laughs> sightseeing. Did you know that Uber operates differently in Japan? Compared to other countries, currently Uber in Japan allows users to hail rides in normal taxis, not private vehicles. But this might be about to change starting in April 2024. Japan plans to introduce limited operations for rideshare services like Uber. However, fares will be tied to existing taxis and drivers, even those using their own cars, will be overseen by existing cab companies. Another response to a taxi shortage and the increased number of inbound visitors. However, with many Japanese companies not allowing side jobs, it remains to be seen whether the regulatory changes will be effective in increasing the number of drivers. What destination should you add to your itinerary in 2024? Well, Yamaguchi has been put on the spotlight as a hot destination to visit with the New York Times, including Yamaguchi City, as the only Japanese city in its list of 52 places to go in 2024. And I can confirm that that general area is a fantastic ad and well worth considering if you want to spend a few days away from the golden route. The city of Yamaguchi can make for a great alternative base to visit nearby locations including Hiroshima and will surely have less tourists too. So as Japan continues to change, it's important to know what to expect. And although 2024 in Japan started on the wrong foot, it still looks like Japan will be a very popular location with a great year ahead. Due to Japan's popularity, I continue to encourage people, you tourists, planning your trips, now to include destinations that are less crowded. So why not check out my less crowded Japan playlist for further inspiration and ideas. And my honest top tip if you're traveling soon to Japan is to make sure that you have a data connection to help you navigate or translate. Pocket Wi-Fi or an eSIM will really help you unlock Japan. So please consider using my affiliate link 
in the video description or the QR code, you'll receive a trusted product and I'll receive a small commission at no additional cost to you. And best of all, you'll be helping out the channel. Thanks for watching. Please consider subscribing to help the channel grow. It really does take multiple hours to put these videos together. And if you want to support further, then please check out my Patreon, donate on Super Thanks or PayPal. There's also my second channel, The Happy Gaijin, for a more casual live stream and vlogs too. And if you're a Spanish speaker, si hablas español, and I've watched all the way to the end, I've recently started a Spanish language Instagram account and will soon be introducing a Spanish language channel on YouTube too. Till next time, stay positive and be a happy gaijin. Safe travels. Bye.